Um, he says, I assume you have had numerous interactions with observations of individuals best described as platonic philosopher kings. I would like you to look back over your life and tell me from your own experiences, what traits apply to these individuals? More importantly, any memorable, unique, or just plain odd characteristics that these platonic philosopher kings you have interacted with or observed. These characteristics may include personality, character, temperament, eccentricities, or physical traits. I look forward to your insight. So I, I read this when you sent it, uh, so this is about a month a month ago, and I've been thinking a little bit about this, and it's, it's, um, it's an interesting question. But the thing that, in terms of traits, in terms of the kind of person they are, I think the thing that always jumps out at me <coughs> um, in terms of these kind of people is that they're always really, really, really smart. That is, they have a high level of intelligence, of the ability to handle a lot of stuff, a lot of data, a lot of information. Um, they are in some realm successful, often legitimately successful, sometimes illegitimately successful. Illegitimately successful, you can think of Ellsworth Turi, who is successful at being a second-hander, is successful at manipulating people, is successful at, uh, you know, the politician type. But they're almost always smarter than the people around them. And they're smarter and they know what they want. They, 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 they have a particular goal. Some of them are more benevolent, some of them are more malevolent. I think the politicians, the also with twoies, the, the intellectuals tend to be very malevolent. But I know a lot of business people who have this platonic philosopher king attitude and they tend to be quite benevolent. They tend to really think that, you know, you see this in Silicon Valley a lot. They are super successful at business, super successful at tech. They're off the charts smart. And then they're now convinced that they can solve everybody's problems. That if only we handed them control. This explains why so many of the Silicon Valley guys are such leftists. If we only handed them control, they could run the world better than anybody else. They could run your life better than you can. Because look, they run their lives pretty good. And they've been incredibly successful and they've done all these amazing things. So obviously, so again, I think there are two types. I'd say the businessman type, the benevolent type, who have honestly been super successful, have I think dishonestly concluded that other people cannot be successful because they're not smart enough, because they're not disciplined enough. And dishonestly, they have come to the conclusion that they can impose, that if only they could force you, guide you, uh, what do you call it, nudge you into better behavior, they could get you to be more successful. That's the kind of benevolent, more positive variation of this. Um, and, and again, you see it a lot in, in, in tech entrepreneurs, among tech entrepreneurs. Um, they really do think they're smarter than everybody else. And to some extent, they are. They really do think they're more successful than anybody else. And they are. But now they think that they can solve all the world's problems because they're good businessmen, and they can't. Particularly not by managing other people's lives. They think that managing people's lives, managing and managing, government managing, economies managing, culture, society is like managing a company, and it's not. And they belittle other people's free will. They belittle other people's ability to think for themselves. They belittle the reasoning capabilities of an ordinary person who's not a genius. And they belittle the idea that for value to be a value, it has to be yours. They can't choose it for you. It's not a value if they choose it for you. It has to be, you have to be convinced it's good for you. 
you have to choose it. So they don't get that. That's where the Platonic philosopher kings. Um, the more malevolent types are motivated not by some benevolent view that they want the world to be a better place and they want to help people become better and they can they can rule them in terms and in, 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 in nudge them and guide them to become better. The other type is is are the power lusters. Again, they're typically very smart. The Paul Krugmans of the world, if you will. Super smart. I'm sure scores very high on intelligence tests. But who have lost touch with reality. Whose successes have all been in the realm of other people, manipulating other people, controlling other people. Or in academia, detached somewhat from reality. Um, and what really seems to drive them is power. And they are willing in their own lives, in their own attainment of power, to evade reality, to ignore facts. They, uh, they achieve within the realm in which they need to achieve. They play by the rules in order to achieve what they need to achieve. This is most politicians. They want you to submit to them not because they have some benevolent uh, motivation to make your life better and to make the world better, although they convince themselves that that's their motivation, but their real motivation is just to subjugate you. Their real motivation is just power and power lust. And in that sense, they're not, yeah, so they're not Platonic philosopher kings in the Platonic sense because Plato viewed his Platonic philosopher kings as very benevolent, as motivated by the right things. But these people view themselves, in a sense, smarter, and they see the light, and they know reality, and they know truth, and they will guide you. But that's all the rationalization for their power lust, for they want to control you, for they want to subjugate you. So I say those are my observations. Uh, do they have, I mean, I, I think a theme that goes here is dishonesty at some level. Obviously, the second type are far more dishonest than the first. But at some level, they're being dishonest. At some level, they're evading something about reality. Um, so, uh, I don't know about personality. You can find uh, across the spectrum. Um, again, the, the second type, uh, other-oriented. The, the key is that they are there to control you, so they have to convince you. So they're, they're very good at dealing with people. The business type is different. Many of them are not good at dealing with people. One of the reasons they think, and they don't try to go into politics, that they don't, try to manifest the, the platonic the, in, the platonic philosopher king is because they're not very good with other people and they're not they, they, you know they're good at managing within a technical context but they're not very social again that separates the two types um, I don't know about eccentricities and I certainly don't know about any physical traits I don't think there are any that unite them so I hope that answers the question. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to respond to our follow-up, Ragnar of the Desert. So uh, feel free. And if I have more thoughts on the issue, I will bring them up. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you 
who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.